And we are live. Ascension Esports Elder League. We're at playoffs week now. Just beginning the Mass Penguins versus Relicates Incorporated. I am your caster, Desirux, followed by my co-caster, the legend of years of old. It is Allspark. How are you doing, Allspark? I'm feeling great. You know, I'm hyped to see this game in action, and I really hope we're going to get a good set of these two teams. Yeah, no kidding. It's been a long road to finally get to playoffs, and we are here. And we've seen some great matches go off. We've seen some great rivalries come up. And right now, we have a pretty good match in our hands. Demoglio, last time I saw him, looked great. Did the sneak rat bush gank on the Twitch will be featured on the highlight video coming up later today. But we are going to get into champion select. And you mentioned it being kind of a long road to get to playoffs. It's even more true for the Relegates, who actually were tied for the sixth seed into this playoff bracket. And they actually had to beat the Chocobos, the team of eight, uh, to be able to play Mass Penguins in this game today. So they had to go through a lot to get here, but hopefully they'll be looking to take the win over Mass Penguins. Yeah, it's been quite a road to get here so far. We do have one missing bad as a beast up on the side of Relegates Incorporated. Is end of the line. That should be a Graves ban, probably trying to target it towards White Raw, although Red Flame Evolved has played Graves top previously. White Raw has Graves you. quite well known of his. The return ban onto the Twitch for Demaglio. Yeah, um, that was the Twitch I was just talking about. He can yep. do some very nasty no things. No cure for fools. Two weeks in a row with just the Twitch. The Yasuo ban, interestingly. Now, this is going to be targeted towards Mr. J Jazz, as Red Plum Evolved isn't much of a Yasuo player. Something interesting to note is that the last time that these two teams faced off, that was in week four of Elder League, not very long ago. And Mr. J Jax was actually on the enemy team. He was on the side of the masked penguins versus the relegates. Versus right now, where he's actually playing for the relegates. So, a little bit of a betrayal there, I suppose you could say, but. They'll be glad to have him on their side, I suppose, as they replace their old mid lane of Cyber to God. Yeah, most definitely. And another thing about Mr. J Jax, he is a player, full time starter for a Dragon League team, the viciously voracious Boilings. First place on that team, they're undefeated, so he's doing really well for himself with that league. We're going to see if that carries over into the Elder League. You know, if he wins the series for himself, look, he can have the best of both worlds. So we'll see whether or not he can actually pull that off. Yeah, imagine. Double champ. And Piccolo Jack on the enemy team is actually going to be replacing the previously uh, starter slash sub Wolfie, who is quite infamous within the uh, Elder and Dragon League, or mostly Elder, uh, for being a quite an aggressive jungler, you know, that carry player. Uh, he would have to take a backseat now, as I believe he's having less time to play, possibly, but... Uh, basically, he's just not going to be here, and so we're going to have Piccolo Jack here, a previous uh, elderly player. He, he played on the side of Off in the Shower with his teammate Autumn Rain. Now we look at the picks, that is the faith is going to be locked in. I have no doubts about the fact that it's going to be a top lane fizz. Yeah, top lane fizz, we've been seeing a lot of the top lane fizz come out. It's been quite popular, especially with the teleport and ignite. Definitely. Something that's really, really strong. The Playful Trickster has so much potential to just... It, it's the outplay button. That's all it simply is. You don't need a flash when you have an outplay button. That's going to be the Ivern locked in by White Raw. That's his secondary pick behind Graves. He's been playing a lot of that, actually. I was kind of surprised that that was going through because I believe that Ivern's actually very strong in the team coordinated environment. And we'll see whether or not White Raw can prove that in this game. Mr. J. Jack's going to be pulling up the Anivia, which he played a couple times earlier today. Gonna have that strong wave clear versus the pick potential of the phase, and he's gonna be diving and split pushing mostly, but we'll see whether or not that'll do much for them here. Mr. J. Jax, Anivia, the Ivern. The Ivern is something I have a lot of concern about, though, because Ivern can be a very strong pick, but it's such a macro oriented pick as well. It's a support coming out of the jungle, so you lose 
aggression in order to gain stuff like zone control, in order to gain stuff like uh, objective control, and he's really good at that. But if you don't play the macro game well on Ivern, he's pretty much just a wasted pick. So I'm hearing now actually that this Anivia is an illusion placeholder. Ah. So there's gonna be Samana's Lucian, he's been playing a decent amount of that, along with, um, what was it? Ezreal, I believe. So uh, the Lucian Lulu. With a, Lu with a Lulu and an Ivern, personally, out of Samano, I would have liked to see something a little bit more hard carry into the late game, like maybe a Caitlyn or something like that, because when you have a Lulu and an Ivern, that's two supports for your AD carry. And Lucian, you can go the crypt build and still scale well, but if he's going the Bork, Black Favor, there's still a decent amount of fall off that you get with being a 500 range AD carry that doesn't build crit, or at least not very much of it. But I mean, having that mid game spike is just so juicy and it could last for a really long time. It really takes that late game potential to come out of a Sivir pick in order to actually outshine the Lucian. Mm -hmm. But that late game scaling, the ability to crit the ricochets, goodness me, it can be just so devastating. Okay, frankly, I've got no idea what's going on with all the gates drafted. I don't know whether these are more placeholders. I believe they might be, because if that's a Lucian for uh, the side of Anivia, then... Okay, so I'm now hearing that this Kog'Maw is a Nazis. Okay, okay. It, actually, I played that matchup on not very long ago. Nazis into Fizz. Now, that's a pretty miserable matchup for the Nazis because one of the nice things about playing top lane Fizz is you're going generally AD, but there's also a lot of magic damage you're doing. So it's, it ends up being kind of sort of evening out. So it's kind of harder to itemize against, along with the true damage that he's packing in the form of his Ignite. And Nazis just wants to get his stacks and farm up. It's going to be kind of a tough time for him in this early game, I feel. Yeah, most definitely. But Red Flame Evolved is a pretty infamous Nasus player. Uh, I've seen him play it quite a few times. I've, I've seen him lane against White Raw playing the Nasus with White Raw being Aurelia. He can be pretty dominating on it, so I will not underestimate him in the least. Yep, Hesitation. definitely not. Especially if he manages to get some help on the side of Ivern. Because um, it may be a flash of space, but played properly with the Wither in the equation. They could possibly make this work out in the top lane and the side of games. Yeah, so now we're going to speed through the picks and bans. All Understood. picks are locked in. There will be no changes. We'll get straight through this so we can get right into the game. And based on the compositions that you've seen so far, who do you expect to now win this part? Oh, uh, I have very short term memory, so uh. actually I can't entirely remember what I saw. Um, especially with all the placeholders. Oh, yeah, especially with the placeholders. Um, I really don't know. How, I think that I would give an advantage to the masked penguins purely because in the past they've had a pretty strong showing against the relegates, having taken a 24 minute win against them one time. And I just like the Facebook one with them, the Nasus, honestly. I think that played properly and with proper team communication, you know, with vision against the Ivor, this top is going to go very well for KR Fangs. I've seen him play this in the past, it's worked out very well for him. And the bot lane. With the new Doran shield build that I'm assuming both AD carries are aware of, it's going to be harder to carry from the bot lane depending on which AD carry wants to do that more so. Probably Samano with the Lucian. So, I, um, I, just, I just like the composition on the side of Mass Penguins more. Yeah, I have to agree with you quite a bit on that one, especially considering they have a bit of a wombo combo going on. Piccolo Jack, the Cataclysm into Autumn Rain's Shockwave can be very devastating for teamfights. But... At the end of the day, you can't undermine Red Flame Devolve's Nasus. He is good at the champion. That's pretty much a given. And if you let him scale into that late game, he could pretty much take the 1v5 victory. Yep, that's definitely true. One thing I do notice, though, is that against the Wombo Combo, you have the Outlier, which is KR Fangs, which is good because then you have somebody who can possibly contest the Nasus split push. But on the side of... If there was a 1-4 situation going on on both teams, with Red Flame Evolved and KR Fangs being split pushers, the side of Pearl Gaze doesn't really have that much in the way of wave clear. Annie's wave clear is very limited range. Lucian himself is fairly short range other than the culling. And look at all the wave clear on the side of Mass Penguins. So if it comes down to a siege situation where Relegates need to hold out against the Mass Penguins, that possibly could go slightly worse for them. Especially since the Mass Penguins have the go button in the form of on the hunt from the Maglio's ultimate. Yeah, and 
To go along with your analysis, I do have to give it to the Masked Penguins. I like their composition more. I mean, Red Flame, though you are a great Nasus, this is not a solo queue area. That, you know, this is all team oriented. So yeah. the better team composition altogether comes down to the Mass Penguins comp, and I have to give it to them, as you were talking about. The On the Hunt, the Cataclysm, the Shockwave, the Chum the Waters, everything works so well together, especially the chase that they have if they want to grab a pick. It, it, it is looking great. They definitely have to agree with you. They're looking very solid, but again, this is Zelda League, and although maybe the corner finals, anything can happen. We gotta see who's gonna be, what jungler's gonna have the more uh, impact in these lanes, and who can just dominate their lane in general. I'm not exactly familiar with the any Oriana matchup, but I, I do feel that it would uh, tend to skew towards Autumn Rain. Oriana just being quite a strong champion in lane, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, Jax has to get pretty close to Autumn Rain, and the good thing about Orianna is she's one of the best champions when it comes to zone control. Just having that ball out there, having the threat of the ball out there, limits so much that an Annie can do, and if you do want to walk up and get damage, you're going to get a ball in your face for that damage, plus the auto attack trade really favors Autumn Rain, so yeah, I do see it going well in his lane. But then looking at the bot lane, I'm loving the fact that Axisol took Ignite. I'm loving the fact that he wants to go hard in this lane. Not having the exhaust will can possibly hurt them. I'm not going to say it's, it will hurt them. It can possibly hurt them, especially if Red Flame can get big, which I do start to doubt because of the comp that is drafted by the Masked Penguins. But they're really going all in with the Ignite. They're expecting to do well in this lane, and I'm expecting to see some pretty big plays come out of the bot. I do think that the Ignite is better in this situation just because, you know, you don't have uh, some of these assassins like maybe a Zed, a Talon, um, nothing really on them there. You could exhaust the Nasus, however, with the split push situation, usually not going to matter. So that Ignite will be pretty helpful. Um, Lulu, I've taken kind of a leave of absence in the past two weeks. Last time I checked, Lulu was busted. Um, not sure if that's quite still the case, but I still think that Lulu is quite strong. Trades well, shields, can just polymorph the enemy if he goes in. So. I see this going either way, depending on whether or not Axisol can really get in on this karma poke. And we are going to find out in just a moment. But for those of you who are just joining us, this is Ascension Esports Elder League. This is an LCS-style tournament with a regular season and playoffs for players in gold through platinum. If you're interested in joining Ascension Esports, we have divisions for all ELOs, including Dragon for Bronze through Silver and Phoenix for Diamond and Above, as well as an in-house ladder. So if you're interested in joining, please check the links down below, check out our Discord, check out our subreddit, and we hope to see you here soon. Yeah, we certainly do. We'll be getting into this on stream quite soon. Yeah, we are hitting the load screen, so we will see the first game start up quite soon. Relegates Incorporated Masked Penguins. Sure to be a slobber knocker. I actually really like both of these teams. I'm big fans of both Demoglio and Samano, so seeing these guys actually face off in the first round of the playoffs is a little bit of a dream for me. Oh yeah, definitely. We'll be seeing how this matches up for them. Um, and when it comes down to uh, compositions, as we were talking earlier, I think that also we need to look at wing conditions. As you mentioned, there's the Wombo combo on the side of the Masked Penguins, but Relicus is kind of all over the place. They can win some lanes. They're trying to split push with Nazis and others. It just doesn't seem like all their eggs are really in the same basket, so to say. That sometimes can be a good thing, but here I'm not exactly sure. We are about to load into game, waiting for those weird spectator things to go off, and here we are. Relegates Incorporated, Masked Penguins, who's gonna take game one? Let us know in the chat who you believe will take it as we get into this game right now. We'll be seeing pings coming out as people take their battle positions. Nobody looks like they're going to be invading in this game. Doesn't appear to be. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Yeah, so far pretty standard spread outs. 
nothing too out of the ordinary. We might see an invade. Most likely not. Neither team really has something that says I'm going to go in and screw you up level one. So two things to note here. Um, Nasus has, in the top lane and the AD carry positions, Nasus has opted for the Doran and Shield for more protection, and this has opted for the Dark Seal. I would have expected more of a corrupting potion, personally. Um, not exactly well versed with top lane Fizz quite as much as KR Fangs is, though, however. Um, and in the bot lane, we have no Doran Shields. I actually expected to see them. I I've been under the impression that they are quite powerful uh, in this meta, so. I, I just heard they were busted, honestly. So I'm a little surprised that Samano went for the long shield and uh, long sword and three long pots. Shield. Had a long shield. You know? I like that one. Yep. Well, it's it's not too out of the ordinary. I mean, everyone really, like, the patch is still new, so it's to be expected yeah. that people are not going to, like, start, you know, diverging off of what they're used to. And on top of that, Blade of the Rune King still incredibly strong. Uh, it's best to get it as fast as you can on Illusion, regardless. Yep, that's definitely true. He's going to be trying to get that item for himself. Red Flame Evolve is going to be taking a significant chunk of damage. And misses first CS on the Q. That's not the best way to start a match. Yeah, definitely not. Oh. Yeah, he's suffering already. Look at that. We got the instant steal coming out of White Raw as he takes the red of Piccolo Jack. Very, very standard Ivern shenanigans, but gosh, does it suck to deal with. KR Fangs using his presence as Fizz very well. Level 2 will be picked up by the Basque Penguins bot lane, but it doesn't look like they're going to do anything with it, so... Yeah, this is going to be a very difficult matchup in the top lane for Red and Flame Evolved. He will need a lot of time to be effective in this game. Meanwhile, KR Fang's already showing effectiveness, and once he hits level 6, that assassination potential as a tanky build is immense. Yep, definitely going to be not something very good for the Relegates to deal with. Um, have, having a quite a significant CS lead so far, but that wave will crash. We'll see how much Red Flame Evolved can get out of it. Do you think? Do you think we'll see a flame horizon? A flame? It's a little <laughs> early in the game to tell. Um, we'll see. I I really think that we need to see uh, how the junglers respond to this. We see Right Raw and Piccolo Jack both hang towards the top side. Piccolo Jack not really going to be able to do as much right now because the way's pushed. Ooh, and a trade in the mid lane going back and forth. So far. Not too much happening as both lanes. Overall, a great push coming out from the Mass Penguins in every single lane, but considering it's an Ivern, it's really hard to get that early pressure and punish those overextensions. Piccolo Jack trying to get something for himself now in the jungle of Relegates. However, White Rose on the other side of the map, possibly looking for a gank. Yeah, it does look like we're going to see the gank. Autumn Rain gets rooted up by the Root Collar. Takes a lot of punishment, and here comes Piccolo Jack. The flag and drag doesn't land. White Raw in the crosshairs next. Doesn't take too much damage. And overall, a successful gank for Piccolo Jack as he burns the flash of Mr. J. Jax. And Red Flame Evolved almost drops the KR Fangs in the top lane, meanwhile. He's not having a very good time up there versus that bit. It's just so oppressive. His KR Fangs going in for the auto attack whenever he can, and then priming the double damage on his W, that Sea Stone Trident, I believe it's still called. So he will actually be picking up those double cloth armors. It won't really help him versus the Sea Stone Trident damage, which is entirely magic damage, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but will help him versus the regular auto attacks. It is, however, a significant portion of his damage output anyway, so he will still be getting more tanky with that. Yeah, and he's gonna need it against KR Fangs Fizz. Already early, almost got killed off, was almost first blood. I kind of wonder what Red Flame Evolved is going to be building first, because it's been a long time since I played Nasus, not since Frozen Heart was a standard rush. Um, hmm. It almost looks like it's gonna be the Warden's Mail, but I would... I, I would entirely expect to see the Glacial Shroud first. Actually, I think it might be an Iceborne Gauntlet. I think that would make sense. 
Still gets that Sheen proc and the CDR, but I'll getting a little bit tanky. He's doing a little bit better for himself with that, but actually, oh. Ooh, a nice gank coming out from White Raw in the mid lane. Burns the flash of Autumn Rain. Red Flame Evolved fighting back a little bit. Actually having a CS lead over KR Fangs for the time being. And this is starting to get a little bit scary for both top laners, but more specifically Red Flame as he gets burnt up by the Ignite and a playful trickster. Overestimating a little bit, trying to get those trades to, you know, maintain a little bit of presence in the lane, but ultimately went too far over the brink and KR Fangs with that Ignite. Possibly surprise Red Flame. And that's the one thing that always happens against a Fizz. You, you don't expect the damage that comes out. At first, it's so tiny, it looks like it's basically nothing. And then out of nowhere, it just adds up and completely wrecks your health bar. Yep, definitely the benefit of that Seastone Trident, actually. If, no, if you're unaware, slightly reworked with the um, Mage reworks, I believe. Uh, so that when you auto-attack something, then you have to wait for a little bit, and then you can W hit them for double damage. So... That's definitely why you see these bur small, uh, big bursts of trade coming in from KR Fangs as Fizz. They will actually go back for that Corrupting Potion that I expected them to start with, but he did get the Dark Seal stack, so it seems to be working out for him. And so we're starting to see some uh, Vision Denial going towards this Mountain Drake, and it looks like they're wanting to start it. Mountain Drake, easily one of the best early Drakes, and it's just simply because of the objective power it gives. Once you start really stacking up on sieges once you start really trying to contest objectives this is the drake that does the work play raw on the top side of the map not really going to be any response from the relegates it's going to be going over to the side of the mass penguins first dragon yeah uncontested too see red flame's getting these kind of favorable trades but then kr fangs just walks in and uses the sea stone trident and then oh never mind and he did go for the Warden's Mail. Was correct on that assessment. Oh, so well, looks most, like I was incorrect. Most likely, it's going to be a Frozen Heart, I want to assume. Yeah, that could work out, but I think that in this... Oh. oh, we do have a fight breaking out. Some Mono going really hard. Has burnt the Calling, trying to get onto Demoglio, forcing the heal out. It will be a trade of Summoners, more uh, favoring the Relegates here. So they will get that heal and they will get that ignite. Man, this camera really loves the top lane in this game. Yeah. It's a Maglio getting forced on once again, taking down to just below 200 health. Now Axisol manages to prevent Demoglio's demise. With that built water colors, definitely trading very well here. Having a little bit of that lifesteal as well, so after the trades he can just heal up. Um, looks like he's going to stay for a bit, however Piccolo Jack has shown himself, so it looks like his full knowledge of the position of Mask Penguins as jungler. Yeah, fortunately for them, the dragon is off the map for now, but the Rift Herald will be spawning soon, and let's talk about that real new Rift Herald. Oh if boy. you can get it in a lane that's not being contested, if you force someone out of lane and pop that baby, it will go crazy, just like KR Fangs is going crazy onto Red Flame Evolved, having to flash away to survive. Yep, definitely very well played by KR Fangs. They're getting all that damage. It just, it, it sneaks up on you, really. That was a point blank fish, but it doesn't matter because that, the CC mostly out of it, along with the damage, it's just like, it's really not the damage portion of the Fizzle that you're mostly afraid of. It's just the fact that he's going to be holding you there and endlessly hitting you with that trident over and over again. And the damage <laughs> yeah, he does have the Dark Seal. Looks like he'll be building a Sheen next. Trinity Force, pretty common thing to be built on this top lane Fizz. And then they just go pure tank right after. And it works so well in punishing whatever opponent you're against. So he does have a little bit of health. So he, if he is going for the Frozen Heart, that is somewhat better. But... I honestly would not build a Frozen Heart in this situation because it is not very nice the item for Nazis. You know, you get the armor, you get the CDR, you get um, the passive, but this has a lot of magic damage, as I've said before, and it just feels like you're putting too many of your eggs in the same basket with um, Frozen Heart. He has mitigated that somewhat with the health and the Kindle Gem, but I would have preferred to see maybe even a nice one Gauntlet or... Well, the thing is that you get the same issue, but... Maybe even um, components of items, honestly. 
Oh, and here we go. Piccolo Jack stalking the top lane. He is spotted out, I believe. Yes, he is spotted out. Still choosing to engage on this. Does have the Cataclysm. Will we see it popped? It is popped, but he's a little bit too close to the tower. Chum the waters completely whiffed. Red Flame wants to turn this around. Unable to. He has to back out because the threat of the damage of KR Fangs is just too high. KR Fangs going back in. This could be the end for him. Flag and Drake is big. And there he goes. Taking down Piccolo Jack, but will drop to KR Fangs in the outcome. So close, but so far. If Carefangs had dashed forward just a little bit more, he would have been in tower range. That might have just killed him, but ultimately will be a one-for-one -one trade. He will lose his flash, but um, yeah, basically just him losing his flash and get, but that will be still be the one-for-one. -one. And Samano picking up the red buff from White Ruz Ivern. So I'll help him out a little bit there in the bot lane. Yeah, He's earning a lot of pressure there with that Lucian. Dabaglio afraid to approach the wave. Doesn't have to fear though. Wave will be coming to him eventually. Ooh, and white Ron Autumn Rain meets Root Collar is used. There is Daisy. He's pretty caught out. He's gonna flash over the wall in order to survive, but that is a great circumstance, really. Well, I'm dashing in, but not really gonna be able to get anything there. And Fizz going for those Triforce components. Once he has, that's gonna be quite a scary fish. Yeah, no kidding. Almost done with the Trinity Force, has two kills right now. Lost his jungler in the last exchange, but he is still extremely strong, extremely potent. Why are really not able, to, either not able to do much or just not in the position at the right time because not really anything going on from the side of Relegates' jungler on this top side. Ooh. Wow. That Seastone Trident is pretty ridiculous. Teleport being used. Here comes Mr. J. Jackson. What a useless teleport that was. <laughs> uh, slightly unfortunate as Mr. J. Jackson didn't get anything there. Um, but, uh, Mass Spank was this ball and it's just going to be like, what was that? And then walk away. But that's yeah. okay. He's going to be walking back towards the mid lane with White Raw. And I mean, that's the power of the on the hunt as well as the shield from Axis Saw. Here's a root collar onto Autumn Rain. We're gonna get some punishment on Autumn Rain, but Piccolo Jack is waiting in the wings. Nothing to come of it. Yeah, kind of a waste of the flash there. Um, Autumn Rain's gonna be quite safe, even without burning any summoners. His teleport actually, um, Autumn Rain's teleport is still up, so if he wanted to, he could have used it there if um, they had been able to make Mr. Jax's teleport work out. Here we go again. Seastone Trident. Oh my goodness, that chunk is so huge. Yeah, it's just like I'm saying. Um, Seastone Trident's all magic damage, and Red Flame involves only got armor. Yeah, he is working towards what I believe is Spirit Fist Hitch later, but he's emphasizing on that armor. He's most likely going for the Frozen Fist. And a fight in the bot lane. Axisol's caught out, getting chunked out by Samano. There's the Ignite on Samano as well as the Wild Growth. Now Sandwalker, a little bit too deep as Demoglio deals damage over and over and over. Wants Sandwalker's head. Samano over the wall. Demoglio unable to finish him off. And now it's actually Demoglio that's in trouble. Demoglio running away from Samano. Flash forward and down goes Demoglio. KR Fang's in trouble as well. Will we see a root collar land running away from White Raw? So close to escaping and gets away thanks to Autumn Rain roaming up and overall being a playful trickster as well. There's action going on all both sides of the map that relegates nearly making both plays work out top lane doesn't work out unfortunately for them but they do get that kill on the bot side at the expense of demaglia's flash and i believe the skill i was quite a quite a drawn out fight between samano and uh Dimaglio there yeah i'm pretty intense that samano was really in the worst of situations at the beginning of that fight and then somehow brought it back and takes out demaglia Having that sustained damage and the fervor as well, being able to build that up over such a long time made his auto attacks really hurt more than you'd ordinarily see. And actually picking up the ninja tabai as well. Yeah, that played a huge part of that for sure. Actually, I believe that he picked that up after this. Um, yeah, uh, then he just had a ninja tabai. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Oh. Daisy over the wall grants vision as well as harasses Piccolo Jack. Let's force him back, actually. Yeah, but still, Piccolo Jack able to get the drag. Second drag of the game. Still haven't got first turret, though. 
Yep. So a uh, 400 gold advantage for 200 gold advantage for the side of um, Mask Penguins. And so it's still a pretty even game here. Um, Saver having picked up that Essence Raver will start to scale a little bit, but Saver really needs about three items before he actually feels good. But Chum the Waters onto Red Flame, Evolved Red Flame getting chunked out. There's the Ignite. KR Fangs wants this. Might he have bitten off more than he can chew? He does. So he backs off for the time being. It looks like he wants to go for this again, though. White Raw is there. Does not spot KR Fangs. And now the pressure in mid lane for this tower. KR Fangs is such a slippery fish. Like. They're trying so hard to give Ooh. Red Flame some assistance. Oh, but we're here to see a Cataclysm fight. Cataclysm goes out. Shockwave misses, and there's Timbers. There's likely the end of the life of Piccolo Jack, but a great flag and drag saves him. Wow. Um. So, Samano dashing into that fight there gets a lot of damage onto Autumn Rain, but he didn't focus down Piccolo Jack. He probably thought that his team had him, but ultimately, I just, I don't know whether or not he could have gotten there in time. I feel like he could have. Just Piccolo Jack getting away, a really unfortunate circumstance for the Relegades. And this game wow. is dead even, goodness. Yeah. Redemption will be picked up from White Rock. Uh, you saw that earlier to be used on Mr. J. Jackson, give him a little bit of HP. And now Piccolo Jack is building some MR. Going to be taking this damage from the side of Mr. J. Jax. Yeah, and Simply there's some... Simply Treads. There's a lot of threat coming out of Mr. J. Jax, despite the fact that he went Annie, which... Is it one of the best late game? Actually, gotta interrupt that for a second because KR Fangs caught out and this is gonna be the end for him. No flash means goodbye as Red Flame starts to win over this lane. Finally. It's gracious. Really, he tried to worm himself out of that one like he has the past few times, but this, the third time's a charm and they will pick his light, uh, pick up. KR Fangs, that is. <laughs> wow, that went better in my head. Okay, well. <laughs> Blue buff going to be given over to Autumn Rain. There's a lot of side, uh, a lot of people on the side of the Mass Penguins on this bot side. Oh, and look what's being started! First Rip Herald of the series getting started up, and I can't wait to see how this is going to be used in this game. And they're almost got it. Come on, open his eye. And there we go. And it will go over to Red Flame Evolved. And if they play this right, they can get first turret pretty easily if they utilize it to its maximum effectiveness. There has to be some pressure in that top lane, though. It's a better call. It is a pretty good call here to give it to Red Flame so we can get the tower. Actually, Kira Fang's not really responding. I expected him to be the top lane faster. But he doesn't drop the Rift Shell just yet. So the tower will be fine for the time being. Uh, he may save it for White Raw to be there or a five man push, I'm unsure. And that's gonna but... be first tower. Hmm. A great rotation coming out from the bot lane of the Masked Penguins. Picks up that first tower. Samano over the wall going after Axisol, chunking him out to one fourth elf remaining. Wow, that was a lot of damage from Samano with only a Bork. Oh, oh. <laughs> and a lot of damage coming out from both of the top laners. I'm glad we're not back to the days of the old wet noodles. It's true, you know, I've seen Maokai and uh, well, Nautilus every game, that's that's always, that's always fun. <laughs> but so, um, the camera still retains its love for looking at top lane when we'd rather look at other stuff, so at least we have something better to look at here. So, so that, um, I, that pause was on the side of the masked penguins. Having some latency issues. All better now. So they will be restarting this. Oh. And we go straight into a chum the waters. And that's a dead red flame. KR Fang still looking strong in this lane matchup. I just never. He's just like pushed up all the time as well. And Red Flame Evolves is trying his best to farm under the tower, but still being punished for just not really much at all. Ah, uh, that just feels bad to be Red Flame right now. Yeah, it really does feel bad. He just I can't just really get a break in this lane. Look at Samano going after Piccolo Jack! Piccolo Jack looking to get ganked instead! <laughs> Having to run away. Here comes the teleport onto the flag. Scares away the bot lane. And now they're going to go so open season on this tower and set it up to 3-0 on the towers. 
And in a short time, that's three towers for the mass penguins along with a 3k gold lead. And Samano still being his old self, going hard all the time. The ganker now the ganked. Piccolo Jack getting scared out of that one. Yeah, it was so tragic. It looked so, so good for them. Piccolo Jack, oh, see, so you know, pause. Piccolo Jack being taken so low there and nearly killed, but then the teleport comes in from Autumn Rain, he gets away, and then and they have a four man in their hands while KR Fang is taking the top lane tower um, unrestricted. So, not really looking really good for the side of Relegate so far. And I think it'll only get worse from here on out because. I really, I don't think that Annie has particularly good late game scaling, and I don't think Lucian does either. Um, I really think that they need some kind of really good fight to be able to turn this around, but right now it looks like Mass Penguins are jarring the snowball. Yeah, especially because they're already ahead in objectives. They got two of the dragons, two of two dragons that have been on the map, as well as three of three turrets. It's looking really good for them. The snowball is starting, the composition is starting to shine, and it's getting pretty difficult for Relegates Incorporated, especially considering Red Flame is just suffering. But here comes KR Fangs, looking to enhance that suffering. Playful Trickster jumps away, Root Color does not go out. There is Autumn Rain there to help him out, and that ends that exchange. But pretty spooky. Sandwalker almost getting taken out. Run back to your wife. I nearly had him as well, Mr. Jajax, almost in almost in range for the stun. I'm sure if they could have taken him out even with the stun, but Kira Fang's going to be able to get away anyways, as he is a slippery little fish. And again. Oh, actually, we'll be seeing a team map from the side of Piccolo Jack. He'll be investing in more damage. Um, nothing wrong with that, honestly. Looking to do that dunk build, possibly. Yep. Speaking dunk. Yeah, he's going for it, and now he's immediately running out. <laughs> and oh, there it is. And... We're going to see the Rift Herald finally. Red Flame Evolve looking to put pressure on the KR Fangs. And there it is, a big chunk onto that turret. And what a large chunk that was. KR Fangs trying to prevent losing any more health onto that turret as he tries to chunk away at this as fast Ooh. as he can. Meanwhile, that's a third dragon picked up on the side of the Masked Penguins. And look at the fights on. Here we go. KR Fangs looking to come up big. Red Flame having to flash away. Now he wants the blood of KR Fangs, but that might have been too much. No, it wasn't as he picks up KR Fangs. Wow, I have I was so certain that, that would go the way of KR Fangs as soon as he re-engaged with that Q, but wow, I okay, so it was a little weird. I saw the damage of the siphoning strike going on to KR Fangs, and then just like another tick of damage. Uh, finish him off. Uh, I feel like that might have been the uh, Guardian of the Sands or the Nasus Ultimate, but well played by Red Flame and barely living there and getting that kill along with the tower. Yeah, first tower of the game, very desperately needed for Relegates Incorporated. They do get their first objective, technically second. Rift Herald was the first. Rift Herald being used to get the second. Yeah. And here we go, Piccolo Jack going in onto White Raw. Daisy is used, and that's a lot of damage onto Piccolo Jack. He's getting chunked out. Jax takes him out. Shockwave hits Jax. And now here comes the Playful Trickster taking out Jax. Red Flame has teleported into three members looking to fight with his team, looking to make big things happen as he chunks out KR Fangs. KR Fangs having to jump away. And now the fight has gone one for one. Red Flame unable to pick up anymore, but overall a great fight that might result in some gains for Relegates, but they choose to back off instead. Wow, what a roller coaster of a fight right there, and Carefangs may be looking to extend it, but. Oh. Nope. Okay. <laughs> just yeah. looking at each other, just backing off. But, um. I actually thought that it was going to go to the size of the Mass Penguins a lot more when I saw Red Flame just running through four members of the Mass Penguins, but he's not taking Nazis, and he was able to sustain him there for a long time while with his healing from his passive and the Ivern Shields. Ooh, one. Um, so ultimately, will be that one for one. Um, didn't quite count Summoners exactly, but it'll be mid for Jungler. Piccolo Jack looks like he's going to be going for that Titanic Hydra. Going to get a little bit more tanky, and he better because he got kind of just deleted in that. Yeah, 
He needs some defensive stats. He wasn't able to pull off the uh, top lane raid, dive it, <laughs> and bury it Jarvan type setup. So Relegate's proving they can hold their own in a team fight, which is good for them. Uh, if they're looking to get... Well, they're only down 2k, but looking to get back into this game is a term I'll use. Relatively even, but... We'll see. Yeah, still in the favor of Mass Penguins overall in objectives, especially considering the Dragons. They're pretty much to get... They're pretty much looking to collect them all. They're, they're, they're going to catch all Dragons at this point. Um, next Dragon is an infernal drake so they are i actually believe it's short. impossible to do that uh i remember reading something that if if you have a three dragons the fourth type cannot spawn you can only ever get three of every type of dragon oh, or really? three of the type of dragon yeah today i learned so I'm unfortunately i'm kind of disappointed now <laughs> yeah there will, there will be will be no catching of them all today but There's another no infernal dragon catch them on the rift yep. oh but why not? This vision control coming out from the Mass Penguins is looking really good so far as they set up to siege this tier 2 tower. So JJX is kind of far, but that's going to be a 5-man push in, uh, coming in from Masked Penguins. So Magleo actually opted for the static shift. Now, ordinarily I see a Phantom Dancer, but I suppose he's fine here because there's nobody that's really going to be diving onto the Maglio. Uh, other than like Nazis, but he's got a lot of help with that. So Ooh, I think that's actually fine. That Daisy was gone so quickly. We're seeing a 5v5 in the bot lane fight. Looks like it could break out at any moment now. And it is as it goes on to Piccolo Jack. Gets shielded on the hunt is used. Piccolo Jack falling critically low. Shockwave hits nothing. Jump the waters this out. Red Flame is doing a lot to soak up so much damage. But Piccolo Jack, Autumn Rain, blinking red. Will they down? Will they go down? They do. Samato picks up a double. That's three down on the side of Mass Penguins. The chase is on. Samato wants more, unable to get any more, but now the Relegates are getting back into it. Wow, what a disastrous fight for the Mass Penguins and the Relegates, showing that they can take these fights, even though they were down just a little bit, but the threat from the Tibbers, the uh, Daisy, just and Red Flame Evolved, doing actually a lot of damage, even though he's been getting bullied in this laning matchup, with only a Sheen to show for it. Not even a Trinity Force or an Iceborne Gauntlet, but... Um, if you look closely, actually, that fight kind of split into two parts there, with Samano engaging on Autumn Rain and Piccolo Jack on the north side of the brush, and uh, to the bottom of that, a 3v3. So, Samano would regroup regrouped with his team afterwards, and just working out really well for the Relegates there. I mean, even without Daisy, all they needed was Red Flame to just soak damage, and he did a great job at that. Wait, did not even use Daisy? Well, I didn't even notice. Uh, Daisy was killed right at the start before the fight even started. Okay, well, there you go. And Saman will be picking up that whole Black Cleaver. Going to be shredding the more uh, squishy members of the team along with reducing the armor of more tanky ones. Um, so that's going to be quite good for them. And finally, Red from the Vault is going to be getting some SMR. Thank God. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to make it actually pretty scary. Um, or the Mass Penguins, he's able to absorb a lot of damage now and able to heal a lot of damage now. Speaking of MR, Autumn Rain has a Banshee's Veil. Uh, I'm only just noticing this, even though I'm pretty sure she had this in the last fight. But, oh! And the teleport is out. Kiar Fangs in the back line has a possible flank set up for him. Daisy has gone out. Big Low Jack might be the ball delivery system. There's a lot of tension going on. The Looking fight waiting dangerous. to start, and here we go. Chum the waters onto Samano. Gets hit by the flag and drag. Piccolo Jack's way too deep. Down goes to Moglio, and there's the Cataclysm as well as a flash. Another member down. KR Fangs not surviving for long. Red and Flame what is just doing so much work. Yeah, he is huge. He looks so good on this Nasus. We talked about it earlier, and he's putting on a great display. I doubted him. I will admit this. I, I kind of talked talked down about it. Like I was like, you know, Fizz, I think that that's a better champion overall, especially in team play, but Red Flame Evolved is proving me wrong. Just running in there with the support of his team, though. Like, he's not just 1v5. It's a collaborative effort. Everybody's just shielding him. He's getting the Lulu ultimate. It's so good for them. And we're going to see a contest coming out here. Um, see if they can do this. This is very scary. 
They can't deny the vision of the ball, so they will always be able to see that. And we'll make the safer call of falling back, which is... They, they made the safer call here. Um, if they, if it had been a seal on the side of the Masked Penguins, that could have been disastrous for the Relegates. They're winning fights as it is, might as well just take what they can get and not try to press for anymore. So that's the smarter play here, I think, from the Relegates. Yeah, Mass Penguins had the early macro, and they had it pretty cleanly. They were doing so well. They had all the dragons, all the towers. But now, as we start to get into this team fight phase, it's just disastrous. They can't fight cohesively and deal with the front line of Red Flame, as well as the damage that's coming out of Samano, who looks so clean on this Lucian. And this game is just defying many of my expectations because at the beginning, I was like, they had a Nazus. I was thinking he was going to be split pushing a lot and not really able to do that because of the Fizz, but he's running in here. He's team fighting and he's doing fantastic at it. And the side of Mass Penguins with that Wombo combo with Chum the Waters, Command Shockwave, On the Hunt, uh, Cataclysm, losing these fights really not terribly organized here. And all my expectations really have been proven wrong by this game. Yeah, so now, what do the Mass Penguins have to do to actually be able to make something work for them? I think that in these fights, they've been really disorganized. Uh, like, the splitting into groups that I mentioned earlier, and just not cohesive, because I think that if they are also the instigators and manage to get a key member, like Mr. Jjax, who's very immobile on that Annie, if they could get a Cataclysm on her, if they could get a Shockwave, that'd be really good for them. And if they just... It, because it looks like they're being the ones pursued in these fights as rather than being the pursuers, even with on the hunt. Because the the, the disengage on the side of the relegates is actually proving quite quite good here. Um, they're disengaging when the mass penguins try for these engages. So I think all altogether all they need a pick. That's what I think they need. They need a pick onto somebody important. Until then, they're just going to keep losing these team fights. I think unless they pull it off and. In a really good um, patch or something. Um, White Rock going to be reconnecting here. Yeah, DC on the side of White Rock causes a pause, but we will get back into the game as he just reconnected. But I think an important thing to note overall is I feel like Somano by himself is the TSM of Ascension Esports. He will either win it all or lose at finals. And I feel like you can't stop this man when it comes to playoffs. Well, I couldn't. I, I wouldn't compare him to TSM yes yet. I haven't seen him flash into the enemy team yet. <laughs> okay, okay, you do get a point there. You know, he's not doing the wild troll cosplay, thank God. Um, but I need a lot of vision is going to be taken, and the Baron is going to be started. This is a really gutsy call. They are using the Redemption, healing up, sending all four members that they have available. And the damage is coming in. Piccolo Jack's getting chunked out once again. And there's a Shockwave. Hits Timbers and White Roll, so it's not going to do anything. Demoglio's going to go down next. Two picked up. And they didn't even get the Baron. They, I think that that was one of the only options left to the side of the Mass Penguins, honestly, because... Their team fight comp isn't winning team fights. They're really not being able to make any of these picks because of the disengage on the side of relegates. They had to go for the riskier option there and pray to God that they got it, but it just didn't work out for them. They made the riskier call, but if it had worked out, that would have gotten them back in the game. Unfortunately, they didn't. So relegate is going to be taking this by storm. That'd be 6k up, and they're going to be looking for the base. Ooh, Samano looking for a little bit more as he gets very aggressive onto Autumn Rain, forcing Autumn Rain's flash. Meanwhile, KR Fangs and Red Flame getting into it. But yeah, I feel like a lot of the weight of this game lies on Autumn Rain, and he hasn't been landing good shockwaves. Last one, onto White Raw and Tibbers. He needs to get that ball in a good spot. He needs to be able to do these huge clutch shockwaves, but they're just not happening. That's the thing, though. Even if they were landing, he went for a, a Banshee's Veil a second time. He's he's crippled his own damage for the survivability of the Banshee's Veil, but he's effectively getting what other people are making up for in positioning. He's he's being sure that he's not going to be you know popped by this Annie, which he's probably afraid of. But it's something that wouldn't necessitate 
a purchase of no, like 3,000 gold and instead should be something that should be covered by positioning. So I don't know. I feel like Autumn Rain is a good enough player that the Banshee's Village is just unnecessary and it could be made up for by just better ma um, microplay overall. <laughs> Take a look at the supports of this team, by the way. Relegates Incorporated, both supports, including the support jungler, because that is what he is, both having double 07 KDAs. You know, that's pretty, uh, it's pretty neat. No, not, absolutely no significance about that at all. <laughs> now, Samano, gonna be taking a little bit. See, if, 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 um, Autumn Rain had like a Rabadons right now, that would do so much more. Yeah. Oh. It really would be. Piccolo Jack caught out once again, goes for the Cataclysm onto Samano, but it's useless! And he's been useless in these fights so far as he has to flash over the wall to survive. It's really just showing the squishiness of his build. It's Red Flame Evolved just showing how, how much he doesn't care about the damage. Oh, wait, no, I take that back. Oh, he still doesn't care. He's, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's still alright, you know, it's just, just before the shield. Um... So they will be taking that inhibitor, and that will be a 7k gold lead for them. I mean, look at his health bar now. He's almost back to full. He does not care about the mass He's got the bangers. adaptive helm. Oh, okay. So the people who weren't caught up with the oh, patch notes, was, um, it, to using the uh, having the adaptive helm makes you take less damage from magic damage taken from a singular speller effect, the same speller effect. So it makes it really good against someone like uh, Cassiopeia, I believe. Um, other DOT effects, so I believe it's for the Seastone Trident, mostly. Um, that's reasonable. I can see that working out pretty well. So now we are seeing another Siege and another Tower go down. Piccolo Jack, Piccolo Jack. is caught oh. out. What are you doing there, Piccolo? Red Flame eats him alive! And now another Siege without having the jungler. Daisy's gonna knock up Autumn Rain and he's gonna feel very terrible the next morning. He drops to Samano. Red Flame doesn't give any Fs about the masked penguins as he takes them all out under their tower. Oh Jump the water goes out. Look at, uh, look at him go. What in the world is going on? He's Red Flame on evolved, clinic. doesn't care. And he's only got a sheen. He doesn't even have a Trinity Force or an Ice Form. No, that's a basic sheen right there. A thousand gold. Goodness. He's only in 450 stacks now. 35 minutes in this game, and it's going to be taken by the Relegates. Oh my goodness. Very well played by them, and perfect KDAs coming out from three members of the Relegates. Mr. J. Jackson, Red Flame Evolved being the only members of the Relegates to actually have deaths. Yeah, I mean, he struggled in lane. He had a yeah. very hard time, but then it was something I mentioned earlier. If he gets into the late game, <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. They need to either pick something that... I, I think that they just have to ban out the Nazis, honestly, because they did pick something that would do very well against Nazis in lane, and it still didn't work out. Um, maybe if they put more jungler attention top, maybe they could leave this Nasus up. But I think that for the next game, I expect a Nasus ban. Unless they want to risk him just getting kind of demolished in lane and still being a monster. Yeah, uh, I, I, you have to ban the Nasus at this point. Red Flame is just too good at it. It's, it's one of his most played champions. He, he loves the Nasus. He, he does so well on it. And that was just. That was a clinic. That was a clinic on how to play yeah. Nasus, on how to lose lane as Nasus and still destroy every single member of the enemy team. Yep, definitely very, very adept on that champion. And we we have to give props as well though to the play of White Rod and Sandwalker, enabling that Nasus, especially especially the Lulu. You know, I when I first saw this Lulu, I was like, you're picking it with the Lucian, not really a hyper carry. I don't really I understand Lulu's a be good champion, but they're possibly better picks, but that Lulu did work for Red from the Ball more so than it did for Samano, I think. Just being able to whimsy him and give him the shields, give him the um, wild growth, it's so good for Anazis, and it just um, clicked for us, as you said. And we are getting into the damage charts, and it really does show.
What in the world? Oh Red goodness. Flame evolved. 26k damage, out damaging some mono. He was an absolute beast. And uh, Axisol has actually out damaged Piccolo Jack. Karma damage has done more than the Jarvan. Uh, that's a little unfortunate. Uh, Piccolo Jack not really being a factor in these fights, um, being too squishy to get in on them, and just getting deleted instantaneously. Hopefully, they can fix something about that in the next one game. Yeah, but we will be taking a short break. Once we get back, we'll find out how the Masked Penguins respond to such a dominating performance coming out of the Relegates Incorporated. See you soon.